When you're studying math, a lot of the times you're looking at two things that are equal to each other, like in an equation. But sometimes you're looking at things that are not equal, and so we use the word inequality to describe those. And inequalities have a whole separate type of writing stuff, which is called notation. There's a whole separate kind of notation, and there's a whole other way of graphing it. So it's really important when you guys are starting to study inequalities that you keep a good list of vocabulary with you. Also keep a good list of notation, which is how you write this stuff. And then also probably keep some examples handy if you can. So like here's what I'm talking about. We know the number 9 is greater than the number 3. So to write it using inequality notation, I write it like this. 9 is greater than 3. And that's how you read it. You read from left to right, just how you read like words. Um, move from left to right. This sign means greater than. I could also write some number is less than another number. Like I could say negative 5 is less than negative 2. Because a negative 5 has a smaller value than negative 2. It's kind of tricky, right? Because 5 would be a bigger number than 2. But when you negativize them, it becomes negative 5 is less than negative 2. Here's where it starts to get a little bit confusing. Things could also be notated like this. I could say 9 is greater than 3, or I could say 9 is greater than or equal to 3. When I add that little dashy on the bottom, what that means is greater than or equal to. Or equal to. So that's confusing because either one of those symbols would have worked. Same thing, instead of my negative 5 is less than negative 2, I could also write negative 5 is less than or equal to negative 2. Or equal 2. Just to make things even more confusing, there's one more sign I'm going to show you, and it looks like this. I'm going to put an equal sign and then put a slash through it. It's an equal sign with a slash through it. What that means is does not equal. Negative 5 does not equal negative 2. That's something else that is a little less common and you probably won't work with it as much in your algebra class, but you'll see it a lot in the future. So those are some notation. Again, notation means how to write things. Those are some notations you're going to want to keep in mind. Another thing that becomes really important when you're doing inequalities is graphing them. Not only do you have to be able to write them and use the correct symbols, but you also have to be able to graph them. And you'll see a lot of this as you go through your studies. The first thing to keep in mind when graphing is how many letters do you have? Do you have like just one letter like X or only M or only T or whatever? If you have only one letter, it's going to be graphed on a numbered line and it's going to be using open circles and closed circles. So if I have just one letter and I'm graphing on a number line, these guys both receive open circles on the number line. These symbols would receive closed circles. And it'll make more sense when you see some examples, but what that means is that this number is a solution, that's why it's colored in. This number would not be a solution, it's like a hole. And that'll make a lot more sense when you start seeing some specific pictures. When you're graphing with two variables, usually using the letters x and y, you're going to be graphing on one of these Cartesian coordinate planes. And there's a couple things to keep in mind when you get going with those. Things to keep in mind are, not only is it a line that is vertical or horizontal in terms of the slope, it also might be a diagonal line using your y equals mx plus b techniques. You have to keep that in mind. You have to keep in mind whether the line is dashed or solid. And the way you tell is that these guys get a dashed line in two variables. These guys get a solid line in two variables. 
And then the last thing to keep in mind, any time you're graphing an inequality in the xy plane, in the Cartesian coordinate plane, when you have two letters, x and y, you have to do some shading. And that's something we're going to be practicing in your future math classes, but it's really important that before you jump into this, you have a whole bunch of really good notes that you can keep handy as you go through your study of inequalities. Before I let you go, there's one last thing I wanted to tell you about, and that is when you come to word problems, there are some tricky phrases you want to watch out for. One thing you might see is, does not exceed. Think about what that means. If something does not exceed 10, that means it has to be less than 10, and you're going to be using one of these signs. Or if something does not equal, you're going to be using one of these guys. If something is no more than 5, you're going to have to decide, is it going to be smaller than 5, or is it going to be smaller than 5 with a closed circle, smaller than or equal to 5? Those are some really tricky definitions and really tricky phrases you're going to have to watch for in the word problems, and you'll probably deal with them on a case-by-case -case basis. But again, you guys, write this down somewhere, like on a note card or something, that you can carry with you to your math class. This is going to be like your cheat sheet, kind of. This is all of the tricks that you're going to want to remember when you just go through your study of inequalities.